What's up, Set King? Stefan here from TechRite. Today, I'm going to be giving my comprehensive review on the new Samsung Galaxy A13 5G. Stay tuned. So if you're looking for a phone that won't break the bank, but is also capable of tasks like online gaming, multitasking, and taking a pretty good photo, this may be the phone for you. Now starting off with the price point, we have a few different options to choose from based on your carrier. First and foremost, Metro by T-Mobile is currently offering this phone at a price tag of $0 when you switch, including tax and some account fees. Metro by T-Mobile is actually the carrier I use on the daily, and I feel like this is definitely my favorite prepaid service. Service. And at a price tag like this, switching is really a no-brainer. The phone is also offered for about $79.99 when opening a new line and also has a retail price of $279. And at Boost Mobile, this phone will be $100 when you open a new line and have a retail price of $249 on their end. Now, I think both of these are actually pretty good deals, so it's up to you to choose which carrier works best for you. Moving on to the build and design, we have an all plastic phone, very reminiscent of the Galaxy A12 from last year, especially when looking at the display. It hosts the same 6.5 inch 720 by 1600 p screen with our water droplet notch in the top middle of the phone, and now we have an upgraded 90 hertz refresh rate from the 60 we had previously, and I have to say it actually looks very nice. The back of the phone, however, has a design change that in my honest opinion is very underwhelming even based off of last year's design. It seems like Samsung wanted to keep everything to a bare minimum based on design and put more focus into everything else. I mean, even last year we had the material transition of grainy lines to smooth matte finish hosting a quad camera setup and the shape of a square, albeit Samsung's new design is definitely looking much less like an iPhone, so good on you, Samsung. This year, we have a triple camera setup with our main PDAF lens rated at 50 megapixels compared to last year's 48. We also have two more lenses, both rated at two megapixels, one being macro and one being our depth sensor. This isn't really anything to write home about, but they definitely get the job done and are much better than I expected. Both our selfie and rear-facing camera are capable of recording video at 1080p 30 frames per second. The mic on this phone actually sounds really good, however the video isn't that great, but at this price point you really can't find a phone that is up to date based on the software, which is Android 11 probably gonna upgrade to 12, uh, and have a great camera simultaneously, or at least it's very hard to find one, and uh, it's definitely not going to be a new one. After we edit, we'll see how it looks. This is a video test on 1080p rear facing camera. And this only goes up to 30 frames per second. So, kinda sucks, but I wouldn't think like 60 frames per second would look all that good anyways. So, uh, really not complaining on that front. But here's uh, what you guys can see as far as like color reproduction. And I'm actually like manually focusing. Uh, I don't. I don't think this has a 
that great of focusing by itself. It's kind of slow to be quite honest. Our power button actually doubles as our fingerprint sensor, which is what we had on our previous iteration, the Galaxy A12. We also get to keep the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and that's definitely something I was scared of considering we see less and less of these each year, even on budget handsets now, which is honestly kind of sad. We also have our dedicated micro SD card slot, volume up and down rocker, a type C port, and a mono speaker that is surprisingly loud and clear. Now under the hood, we have a MediaTek Dimensity 700 5G and a Mali G57 GPU paired with four gigabytes of RAM compared to the previous two we saw in the A12 and 64 gigabytes of internal storage compared to the 32 gigabytes we saw previously. This is a new processor we are using and it seems kind of foreign to a lot of people, but don't worry, this is actually a much needed upgrade. The A13's new Dimensity 700 chipset actually beats out the old P35 we saw in the A12 by almost triple the score. So on the Dimensity 700, we received a score of 294,507 compared to the Helio P35 score of 99,120. So this of course means that multitasking as well as mobile gaming with games such as Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile will run very, very easily. As for the battery, we are keeping our 5,000 milliamp one from the previous A12, which is more than enough to get through a work or school day with moderate use. I find myself usually having around 30% at the end of the day before I put it on the charger. Speaking of charges, we are actually missing our wall charger brick inside of the box for some reason, and we only find a USB Type-C to Type-C data cable, which is honestly pretty odd because I've heard many argue that you can just use your previous charger on this device, but many people don't actually have a previous Samsung charger with the correct fast charge rating, which is 15 watts on this phone, let alone a charger that is compatible with Type-C to Type-C data cable. This, in my opinion, is definitely a cash grab from Samsung and nothing more, and based on the current climate of the economy and inflation we're seeing all over the US, this is something we can expect to continue. So if anyone has a Twitter, let's make bring back the brick trend. Also hit your boy at their follow to be updated on more tech news. But in the end for the price this is offered at, I think this is definitely a well needed upgrade. And if you guys have the A12, I feel like you guys should upgrade to the A13 5G. And obviously the huge upgrade that we have on here is we're going from 4G LTE, to 5G, so we're gonna be using a faster network. We're also gonna have double the RAM, double the ROM, we're going to have a new 90 hertz display. And I think really the only uh, downside about this phone is that we don't get a charger brick included inside of the box. Again, bring back the brick, let's make this trend on Twitter. But at the end of the day, the price that this device is offered at is really unbeatable to be quite honest. I mean, you get this phone for free. I did get it for $79.99 at Metro by T-Mobile because I did add a new line. Uh, but I think this is definitely an appropriate upgrade and I think a lot of you guys are really, really gonna enjoy this phone. Yeah guys, that is my comprehensive view of the Galaxy A13 5G. If there's anything I missed, definitely leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your opinions. And if you enjoy this video, please leave a like down below as well subscribing if you're not a part of the teching already. Also hit the notification bell if you guys want to be notified every time I do upload a new video. This has been Stefan from Sekrite. Peace out, Tech King.